the CP Newsroom. I'm Nicola Menzi. The Supreme Court has declined to hear appeals affecting the status of gay marriage in five states, effectively shutting down attempts to maintain a traditional definition of marriage in these five states. The same thing could happen, however, in six other states that also fall under the same federal court jurisdiction. This means same-sex marriage could be legal in 30 or even 35 U.S. states plus D.C. if the trend continues. Joining us to take a look at the issue is Eric Metaxas, TV host, author, and outspoken religious freedom advocate. Welcome, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right. So what do you make of this huge decision or non-decision? You know, it's not even a non-decision. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like they heard the, the case and said, we don't know what to decide. They, they, they refused to hear uh, any cases. What do I think of it? Um, you know, who cares what I think of it? It's a strange thing. The Supreme Court uh, is one of those institutions that it's just like when John Roberts made the uh, famous or infamous uh, decision on health care. You, you almost need a PhD in the Supreme Court to understand the details. All right. We know that the practical effects of it are that's what we feel. That's what, what uh, you know, American citizens feel. And as far as that goes, I honestly don't know what to make. I guess this gave them an opportunity. By not taking the case, it gave them an opportunity to make a decision without making a decision. Because if they had made a decision, it would be like the Roe v. Wade decision, which continues to be wildly unpopular 41 years mm -hmm. after it was, it was decided. Okay, and some critics have also taken that position that maybe they're just kind of biding their time um, and kind of letting popular opinion determine how they... Well, move. okay, and this is where they're wrong, okay. because if you think about it, it's not about... Pop See, most Americans don't understand how America is supposed to work, right? And I include myself. I mean, we're, we haven't had for 40 years... Uh, we haven't had education on this stuff. Like, it's something that we've kind of skipped right, for the last right. 40 years. So we think, okay, how is America supposed to work? It's supposed to work that uh, we have a democracy so people get to vote. It's not about popular opinion. It's not about polls. Mm -hmm. It's about votes, right? Right, right? So if you take a poll and say, hey, what do you think? What do you think? I don't really care what people think. I care if they were motivated to get their rear end to the voting booth. If right. they weren't motivated to do that, I couldn't their care less care. what they think. So that's one issue, that it's about voting. Mm -hmm. And then it's about ask, you're asking your leaders, when you vote for a leader, you're asking that leader to be wise because sometimes leaders will do things against, um, let's say, what the popular vote was, right? Right, right? And they're, by the way, they're supposed to do that, right? I mean, if you think about it, when you think about civil rights, for example, what if everybody says, you know, we don't think there should be civil rights? I mean, that's a time when the leaders really have to carefully think, and I hope pray, mm -hmm. about what is the right thing, that, that we have the ability to make a decision which might be temporarily unpopular. I think that's exactly where we are with the issue of same-sex marriage. In other words, you have a lot of judges who think, right. correctly or incorrectly, they think that we're making a decision because we've been given the authority to make this decision. We were put here by a political process. I mean, even if they weren't directly voted in, people who were directly voted in appointed them, and so this, right, is, all, right. um, this is all kosher, right? They mm -hmm. have the ability to do this. The problem is that views of uh, how to interpret the Constitution and views of pretty much everything else, especially with regard to sexuality, have changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, and I'm one of them, feel that uh, the Supreme Court is out of touch with the fundamentals of the American system and the American populace. Okay. And so obviously that, that creates problems and it's why so many people are upset about this. Okay, so maybe related to that a bit, how you're not too concerned with popular sentiment because that shouldn't be what's yeah. driving the high court's decision. Uh, but nearly, you know, 50% of Americans are in favor of same-sex right. marriage. Well, the reason I, I, I get annoyed at this is that yes. I just wrote a book on Dietrich Bonhoeffer, okay? In Germany, most of the people were adamantly for Hitler uh -huh. and against Jews. Uh -huh. So my question is, who cares? Like, people can be wrong. So we have true. to be very careful very about saying that you better jump on the bandwagon. We keep hearing this phrase about the right side of history. Exactly. This yes. is nonsense. Like, I want to be on the right side of truth, okay? On the right side of love, on the right side of God. I don't, I don't really care about, you know, hi history goes 
if you talk to somebody in 1915, they would tell you that communism is inevitable. You're crazy. Don't you see the masses around the world, you know, are pushing for communism? Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that ideas come and go. The question is, what is truth? Right. And right now, when people say that, I think, what is that opinion worth? I mean, people change their opinions. Why, why do they change their opinions? Sure. Why, 10 years ago, was it not 50%? Let's have that conversation. Right, Can we true. have that conversation? So, you know, I, I think it's, it gets a little silly. Okay, good point, good point. Um, so, what do you make of the various Christian responses, some more, yeah. um, who says, you know, maybe Christians should just maintain the values that we have mm -hmm. and model that for the greater society? Right, so if I don't want to, if I believe, if I I don't believe in slavery, I just shouldn't buy a slave, right? <laughs> Right? Is that what he's saying? Right. No, but people, that, that's, I think Peggy Noonan wrote that like about 10 years ago. The point is, it's like if you're against abortion, just don't have one. Or if you don't like what's on TV, just turn the channel. So how it far doesn't do we work have to that go? way. How okay? Far do we if have you to know go? something is wrong, okay? okay? William Wilberforce, my hero, I mm -hmm. wrote a biography of him. He stood against entrenched interests who mm -hmm. said, mind your own business, keep your religion in your house and in your church, and shut up. And he said, I'm not going to shut up. I'm standing up for what is right. right. And Bonhoeffer did the same thing. He said, I don't really care that most Germans and even most people who purport to be Christians don't agree with me. I don't really care. I care about what God says and what is true and I have to represent that. Okay. And, I, and I think that when people, when Christians say, I'm just gonna have my own little private little religion, then move to China, because you can do that in China. You can, you can have your little stuff, your little church stuff, and then when you get out, you bow to the secular authority of the state. To me, that's antithetical to, you know, uh, God's plan, which is that we have religious freedom, that people can practice the, the religion that they want. And so it's the opposite of theocracy. It means that somebody can be an atheist, somebody can be a Jew, somebody can be a, a nominal Christian, somebody can be an evangelical Christian, that we have total freedom. When the state starts picking winners, right, and starts saying, like, we're going to go with this one, mm -hmm. it, in a sense, they're establishing a religion, right? In other words, it's the opposite of true religious freedom because the state and the muscle of the state is getting behind a particular way of seeing the world, of seeing sexuality, and that's basically a secular humanist worldview. Okay. That's what's happening right now. So it means that if you don't toe the line, you're on the outs. And the government of the United States of America was founded by people who understood that that was wrong, and they had fled Europe specifically because of this. And so true. we're at a an odd point in American history. Okay, so having said all of that, who gets to define uh, what marriage is for a pluralistic society? Who gets to define it? Well, um, I think that this is one of those things, before I even answer that, I would say we, we haven't had any kind of a substantive conversation about this. And this drives uh -huh. me crazy. The United States of America with a free press, right. supposedly free press, supposedly free media, supposedly market forces determining uh, what is on TV. How is it that I cannot see a substantive conversation anywhere on what marriage is? I mean, for example, I've, I've never heard anybody make the rather obvious point that to say that, okay, Two people, two, any two people should be able to get married, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say, excuse me, why two? Like, who are you to impose your view of things that it should just be two? Where do you even get that from? Right, right, Where right. do you get two from? What is that? Why not three? I mean, I think if you don't think it could be three or four, you're a bigot. You know, the thing is, we're not having any conversation about this. People just go, yeah, 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 shut up. Like, we, they don't <laughs> right. want to have a conversation right, right, right. because things are moving in the direction of same-sex marriage, clearly. And so people say, well, we don't want to rock the boat and have an actual conversation because it might, it might disturb things a little bit. So we're like, we'd prefer to shut down conversation. Okay. When that's the case, I'm troubled. I say that's okay. not the American way. We should be able to talk this through mm -hmm. and we should be able to have Americans really understand this? They don't. They've been fed basically propaganda that right, says, right. if you don't think this, excuse me, shut up. Like, that's really not uh, the way it's supposed to go. And so, in terms of who defines marriage, I think that, you, you know, you have to have a real conversation and a real spirited public civil debate before you can do that. We have, we've had anything but that. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the most disturbing thing of all. Okay, and what do you, finally, what do you make of um, 
groups, Christian groups, the most recent one, um, Evangelicals for Marriage Equality, mm. um, who come out, they say they're just as Christian as you or, you know, the Southern Baptists and other groups, yeah. but they believe that uh, allowing um, this civil right yeah. for people of the same gender to be married sure. and have the same rights yeah. doesn't conflict with their Christian ethics and beliefs and faith. Well. Um, I think the main issue is religious freedom, right? In other words, it's one thing to talk about w whether two people of the same sex can actually be married. Is that a, an absurdity? Is that a possibility? Like, that's a conversation which we haven't really had. But the real question is religious freedom. If someone says, I don't think that's right, and that doesn't go, that, that, that my religion says that can't be, mm -hmm. and I'm going to teach my kids that way, and I'm going to send them to a school that teaches them what my religion teaches, the idea that people who hold that view, the traditional view, which President Obama held 10 minutes ago or whenever, 10 minutes you know, right, before right, Joe right. Biden said it. Basically, that point of view is not just being marginalized, but we, uh, people of that view are being demonized. And so evangelicals who support same-sex marriage, it seems to me that the onus is on them to fight for religious freedom for, for people with whom they disagree. Okay. If they're not doing that, I'm not interested in what they think because that to me is a more fundamental value. Jumping on the bandwagon of what everybody thinks is okay is always popular and it's always easy to do. The hard thing to do, and I would challenge them, is to step up for religious freedom and defend the rights of the people who disagree with you. If okay. you do that, then I will give you some respect. Okay, well, well, thank you for your input, Eric. And uh, it sounds like what you're saying is, first of all, uh, there needs to be some serious education about how the U.S. government actually yeah. works. Yeah. And maybe we should actually go back to more foundational issues of even defining what marriage is, who gets to define it, how it plays out in society. All right, so thanks very much for your input. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, and thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please write to us at cpnewsroom at christianpost.com. See you next time.